Hello, my intrepid friends. How are you? Paul Gordon here, The Fine Art of Face Dancing. I want to talk to you for a moment about what it means to keep yourself moving forward and, in the process, share a story with you that, if I tell it well, hopefully it will convince you of the power of storytelling and how choosing a good story gets the message across. So, you are in the process of building your business or making whatever big decisions, right? Yes, you are. Of course you are. These are big decisions. These matter to you. They are important. They affect your life. They affect the livelihood of all of the people around you. And you want to make enough money to be able to afford whatever uh, next level you are headed for, right? Good. Here's your process. How do you get there? You get there with a certain amount of discipline, attitude change, and an understanding of the amount of time everything takes so you don't get ahead of yourself, you don't get impatient, you don't chase the shiny object syndrome, whichever that is, you don't get in your own way. Do not do that. A long time ago, I was studying ballet in Manhattan. I was training to be a dancer. I became a professional performer, dancing, uh, acting, all kinds of stuff. I make my own. I'm better working at my own stuff than I am working for anybody else. That is why I ended up becoming an entrepreneur. So, here's the story. I was studying ballet in Manhattan, and in order to do that, one of the things that you have to do is find a job. And one of the easiest jobs to find is a uh, restaurant work. As a matter of fact, um, there's a funny t-shirt that they used to print. I should have purchased one. It was one long word on your shirt. It said, actor, dancer, singer, model, waiter. <laughs> And the joke was, oh, you're a dancer, really? Which restaurant? You're an actor, really? Which restaurant? So yes, I was working at a restaurant called The Saloon. It was across from Lincoln Center, 64th and Broadway, and it's not there anymore. Don't bother looking, you won't find it. I was living in Brooklyn. I was living uh, between Cob Cobble Hill and Carroll Gardens. Um, on Sackett Street between Clinton and Henry, for anybody who knows that area. And my job sometimes had morning shifts, sometimes had lunch shifts, and sometimes had evening shifts. And the evening shifts ended up very late. So, here I am doing my dancer life in New York City, and I had some late night shifts. And you get out of that place at like 2.33 in the morning, sometimes later than that. And the subway, the F train at that time of night, um, takes forever. You don't know when the last one came. You don't know when it's going to arrive at the station. And you don't know how long it's going to take to get there. So I would often fork over the extra money, splurge for a cab. And every cab had its method. Most drivers scream down the road from green light to green light until there's finally a red light. And the way to get there, there was one way to get down from Upper West Side down to uh, Brooklyn. You go down Columbus, you scoot all the way down that west side, you hit uh, way downtown, you make the little, uh, uh, the little kind of circular turn around uh, Town Hall, and then you go over the Brooklyn Bridge. So it was normal to get in the cab and just pay attention to all the lights and see when the cab was going to start slowing down. And you watch all the yellow cabs, you know, slowing down and jockeying for space. And there was this one guy. And this is why I'm talking to you now. There was this one magic cab driver who 
did not drive like all the others. He just slowly accelerated and got in a groove. And just so you know, in Manhattan, 40 miles an hour will pretty much guarantee you most of the lights. Everyone was passing him, passing and passing and passing, and he was just cruising along, and he made it all the way down to Town Hall, having to catch one light down there in order to make the left and then continue to go over to the Brooklyn Bridge. And then, after that light, he made it over the Brooklyn Bridge, got lucky, turning down toward my apartment, and there was only one more light that he hit in that entire time. And at the end of that ride, I sat there looking at it and I said, you only hit two lights. That's amazing. And he said, yeah, everyone else rushes by. I don't know what they're rushing for. I don't think they're getting you there faster. I said, maybe someone would get me there faster, but I'd be banging my head on the seat and on the windshield and on the seat and on the rear windshield. And this was just a great experience. And I gave him a big tip. After you've been a waiter, you will never tip shitty again. Please remember that, folks. In America, tip your waiters, not for the taste of the food. They're not in control of that. Give them something for their good service. And I gave him a very good tip. I was delighted. I have never forgotten it. I don't know his name. I should have looked at his name. I would have perhaps remembered it. But that was magic. He was the genius cab driver. Why do I tell you that? Can you figure it out? Are you getting in your own way, jockeying for position with all of the other people around you that you see out there? They're gonna get there sooner. They're gonna get there fast. You're not doing something to get there quicker. You need to make more money now. And the fact is that you have a process and there are lots of potential stops and starts along the way. And if you understand and prepare yourself with a mindset shift that gives you the ability to smoothly navigate all of that stuff without letting everybody else's sense of six figures, seven figures, eight figures, nine figures. I made this amount of money in a month, in a week, in a day. Screw that shit. Don't pay attention to someone else's dangling of their candy. Just prepare yourself for your journey and understand what you have as a long game and get started and take your time and do it methodically and correct. Am I getting through to you? Is this sinking in? My best to you. I'm here for you. We're in this together. If you're in the long haul, compañeros.